Hello and welcome back to Steve's Top 50. Today I'll be doing number 30 through number 21. Now this marks the halfway point in this video. It's been a lot of blood, sweat, and my tears to get here. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Tyrants of the Underdark. Number 30 on my list is Tyrants of the Underdark. This is a Dungeon & Dragons themed game that takes place in the Forgotten Realms area uh, series, if you're interested in that sort of thing. And this game is about the Drow. Now, the Drow are a race of Dark Elves. They're typically considered uh, bad guys. They're scheming, manipulating, backstabbing, and they live in underground cities. And this game is you are one of the tyrants in the Underdark. You're trying to push your clan forward to score the most points and win the game. And what's fun about this game is there are so many aspects to win. This game, you are building connections between cities, exerting your influence over those. And you do it in a variety of ways. It's like a deck builder, but you can get points by uh, controlling cities. You can get points by discarding certain cards or having certain cards. There's a lot of different ways you can win. So you're not all necessarily, all the players are not focusing on the same aspects as you're going through the game. But that being said, this game is deceptively fun. When you look at it, it's kind of drab. Everything's, you know, purple and dark looking. When you play the game, that doesn't matter. It's fun. It's a fun game. I like the route planning aspect, trying to cut uh, the other players off to getting to certain cities before they can get there. I like building the deck in my hand to the maximum effect for whatever strategy I happen to be going for. I mean, this is just a fun one. And the D&D theme on top, I love it. Tyrants of the Underdark. Santorini. Now, this is a fun game that I liken a lot to uh, like a chess or even a checkers, where it's a two-player game, although there's a variant you can play uh, three or four players in. There's two versions of this game. There's vanilla, and then there's one with God's powers. You're taking on your opponent, you're moving around, you're building on a tower. The first person to get on top of a three-story tower wins. That's all you have to do. But you can cap towers so nobody can stand on them. You can put obstacles up in the way of your other players. You can try to herd them and trap them so they can't make any moves. And then you win then as well, just because they're trapped, cut off, and can't take an action. So this game is based on the Greek city of Santorini, which exists in the real world and looks beautiful, though I've never been there. Uh, you can tell it right off the bat. It's got everything's white with blue roofs and blue to uh, tops to the towers and things. So it... And in the Mediterranean setting, it just looks like a wonderful place. But uh, the Greek theme on there, too, the gods have unique powers. You pick a god, basically, and that's the power that your character has. And you want to use that to your advantage over the other player to try and help you get on top of the third story or shut them down as quickly as you can. So a very replayable game. It is a lot of fun, and it is challenging if your opponent's up to snuff. <laughs> Blood Rage. Number 28 on my list is Blood Rage. This was a big game from Simon a few years ago before Rising Sun came out earlier on my list. And it is similar but different enough that I love it and it's on my list just like Rising Sun is. Now, in Blood Rage, you're not in feudal Japan. You are in Viking land. You're in the Norwegian mythology. So there are all kinds of creatures from Norwegian mythology you can buy into your army. Uh, there's also a drafting mechanism here, which I think is a lot of fun. This is one of the big draws for me in this game, is at the beginning of each round and the start of the game, you get a hand of some cards with different powers on them. You pick one and you pass. And you do that until you have uh, you know so many cards, and then you start that round. This is fun because you can see what cards you have, so you know what your enemy is going to be getting when you pass it. And you can take anything really juicy out of there you might not want them to have. But it's also fun, too, because as you're passing these cards along, you can think about what you've already picked and what you're staring at and see if you can combo any kind of, you know, special actions going on there that you can really up your level of play. So the combat aspect, this is area control. You want to move into an area. There is combat. Whoever's left, they score that area. Your cards help you. The monsters you buy help you. There's a lot going on in this simple area control game and it is so much fun i love it blood rage 
Detective, a modern crime board game. This is a game about solving a mystery. You and the other players are playing detectives and you get a case. There's a bunch of cases in there, so it's replayable. And you are following leads. It's similar to the Sherlock Holmes consulting detective in that you're basically doing the same thing. But this is a much improved version over that with board game aspects going on. So you are moving around this map. Time is of the essence, mind you. There's a time track ticking down, so you have to be careful which clues you choose to follow, and you need to be thorough in your investigations. Something else really cool with this game is it has website integration. So you go to the detective uh, website off the portal uh, game page, and you can enter relevant data to the case you're performing, and it will give you additional clues, perhaps. You can look up uh, there's hyperlinks in there you can look up. They'll give you more information there too. So some of the players can be reading up backstory on the tablet or the uh, computer, whatever you have in front of you. Other players can be working on the physical evidence that's in front of them. And you got to come together as a team and figure out the mystery. I love crime solving games and mystery solving games. I love the puzzle they have. And to me, the web integration of the web page really elevates that because now you know, the sky's the limit. Whatever the web page links to is part of the case. It's not contained in the box. It has great expandability, I'll just say. There's so much information you could pot potentially get. I love it. Detective. Dinogenics. This is a game that is very similar to the movies Jurassic Park, where you are running a dinosaur park you are genetically creating these dinosaurs, you're putting them in pens, and you are attracting visitors that generate revenue for you. Now, this is very much like the movies where dinosaurs can run amok. You need to have them penned correctly. You need to be constantly upgrading your pens. When you're adding more dinosaurs, you have to make sure that you aren't mixing dinosaurs, but there's certain dinosaurs that you can mix with others. So it's really cool that you can keep track of all this stuff and try to make a diverse and efficient park, because really this is about efficiencies. You want to reduce your costs, you want to uh, build smartly, and you want to get that revenue in. You do that better than the other players, you win. And just the theme alone I think is great, let alone the dinosaurs. You collect sets of cards to get a new dinosaur, so you're always wanting to draw from the deck. You want your stegosaurus, you need enough stegosaurus cards. It's fun. Every game is a little different based on the card pools and how you might want to set your park up. So, I've got nothing bad to say about it. It's a great time. Dinogenics. Root. 25 on my list and the halfway point to number one is the game Root. Now, this is a simple game to say. Hard to play. And I'm telling you why right here. You have different factions that are very asymmetric. You couldn't get a whole lot more asymmetric than this. You have the cats who are all over the map. You have the birds who are in a big open scale conflict with the cats. The cats and the birds play totally differently. The birds, my favorite race to play because they have an action programming mechanism they use. You program basically what the bird's going to do that turn. If you plan poorly, the bird can't execute. You don't get use of your full turn. I mean, that's just my favorite. But the cats, they are very industrial. You have the Woodland Alliance, which is a collection of other critters that are trying to stir up rebellions all over the board. You have the raccoon, the vagabond, who's sneaking around in the trees. And he jumps out and he does stuff too. He's a really fun character to play. He plays totally different than all the other ones too. This game is a bear to learn how to play because everybody plays differently. And in order to play well, you should kind of have a good idea how your enemies are playing. So you have to pay attention to how everybody plays so you can make the best use of your turn and figure out the best strategy to beat them. But if you do the investment and you learn how to play the game, you're going to be rewarded with a really fun game. I love the artwork in this game. I love the board. Oh, man. I love the different races and how they play differently. There's so much going on in this game that I like. And because of this, it is super replayable. Not only because the state of the board could change greatly in each playthrough, but also you could play a different race you're not familiar with. So, I mean, this is a great purchase if you're going to get it. I think it's a lot of fun myself, and I think you're going to love it too. That's Root. <laughs> Mechs versus Minions. 
Number 24 on my list is Mechs vs. Minions, which is put out by Riot Games, who produced the extremely popular video game League of Legends. And in this board game, you are playing the roles of the, uh, the little tinker gnome people who build mechs and ride in them. And a lot of those are actually in the video game. So uh, if you're a fan of the video game, you want to check this out. It's a really well done game. But that being said, what I like about this game, much like the birds in Root, is this is action planning. You have to plan out your turn, you have your twists, your turns, you're going forward, you're controlling your mech, you're programming it. And then you hit a button and away that mech goes. And I sure hope it does what you wanted it to or you're going to be in a tight spot. Now, upping that level a little bit from Lords of Zidit, where you're all operating independently, Mechs vs. Minions, you're on a team. Everybody on the board is trying to clear the monsters out. So you're going to want to coordinate your programming with the other players to try and be the most efficient and clear the board out uh, and not get yourselves into trouble. So the what's I think the best part of this game is that it's the action programming as a team. There's a lot of working together you need. And, oh boy, it is very replayable. And it's replayable too because you can level up your little mech people. They get more powerful. There's special cards that open up. It has amazing miniatures, great packaging. There's little things hidden in the packaging you might find. When you level up, you open up a sealed envelope. And that's got information in it too. So it's an exciting game to play because you never know what's going to happen the next map. I mean, check it out. Mechs versus Minions. Everdell. This is a fantasy game where you are in a village full of like rabbit people and possum people, little critters. And you uh, may have seen this game before. It's got a giant tree prominently featured on the board, which if you're casually walking by and you see somebody playing this game, you're going to notice it because boy, that stands out. I think a big selling point for this game, too, is that it's pretty easy to play. The game itself has a lot of card collecting. You're uh, trying to get good cards to build. You're building a tableau. Your village in front of you is a tableau. A lot of them, too, will combo with each other. you got to keep your eyes out for any juicy cards that you can combo and get the most out of your village. And you're competing against all the other players in their little villages. So this is an easy game to learn, but it can be hard to win because there's a lot of different strategies to employ and a lot of stuff to keep your eyes on in this game. And you know what? I love the theme. It's fun seeing all those little critters on the cards and all the little villages. It's cute. I like it. Everdell. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Betrayal Baldur's Gate is another D&D themed game taking place in the Forgotten Realms world. In this scenario, or a game as it were, you are in the city of Baldur's Gate. And this plays a lot like Betrayal at House on the Hill, which is a different theming, the original theming of this, which is a horror game. Now this game has horror elements in it, but it also has regular D&D, Dungeons and Dragons style fantasy elements in it. And the game plays the same as the original, where you are in this exploring a city as opposed to a creepy old house. So you, on your turn, you and the rest of your crew will roll out and you'll flip tiles over. There could be events to happen, could be items that you collect and equip. And there could be omen cards. At some point when there's so many omen cards out and you fail a dice roll, the haunt or the adventure, or whatever you want to call it, begins. And typically, one of the players in that turns traitor and there's new scenario rules to play. This game is fun. So is the original Betrayal House on the Hill. They are fun, fun games. The players, you know, you get a random scenario each time when the haunt begins. The city's randomly set up because you're shuffling the tiles up between games. You know, this is one of the oldest games I've loved. Not this theming, but I've had Betrayal at House on the Hill since the early 2000s. And I love that game and I love this game. This is an updated version. I love the D&D theme on it. And each time you play, the fun for me is when you are the haunt, you are the bad guy taking on the rest of the team. That's fun because that's usually challenging. And I love a good challenge. And this is a fun game. Heroes of Normandy. This is a comical cartoon interpretation of World War II. You have the Allies versus the Axis. And it's played out as a little war game with tiles. There are no little miniatures or chits 
you have little cardboard tiles with cartoon pictures on them, which I think is fun. What else I think is fun about this game is the activation sequence, right? So you have your force arrayed before you, and the enemy is theirs, and there are scenarios you go through in the book, and they have difficulties. One scenario could favor the allies, one could favor the Axis. I love that too. I like being the underdog in this because I like a good challenge, but I also like playing the game in general, no matter which side I'm on, because it's so fun. And it's an interesting strategy twist on the game that there's activations. You can only activate three units per turn. You might have seven, eight units on the table, but you can only activate three per turn. So you have to be very cautious of who you activate. If you push out too far with uh, three units, like you just keep activating them over and over again, they don't have backup. The rest of your army is all the way in the back. Or you can do a slow crawl where you're just slowly moving all your units up but then a lot of units could be taking fire in the meanwhile. Now, when you're playing and you put your activation uh, tokens down on your units, you have a red herring in there too, one that you're going to put out that won't be activating. And that's so the enemy doesn't exactly know what your strategy is, doesn't exactly know which units you're going to do. And they have the same option to them too. So there's a little bit of bait and switch could be happening and a little misdirection in there too, which is always fun. But I tell you what, here is a Normandy is a really fun game if you're into war games you don't mind the cartoony style i think it's fun here is normandy all right everyone well thanks for sticking around and catching my number 30 through 21 i'm gonna be back tomorrow we're in the home stretch it's all downhill from here there's two days to go thursday and friday what games will those days hold you have to tune in to find out Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.